All right, well, good morning. I'm Jeff Hammond, Executive Director at International Ground Source Heat Pump Association. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's a pretty tough act to follow uh, with that keynote and all the other speakers, so we'll try to be as interesting as we can. This is a great time to be in the industry, and there's a lot going on right now, so I'm... Uh, I guess I jumped the gun, huh? <laughs> All right. But a lot going on in the industry. I'd like to just give you an update on what's happening with IGSPA training. You know, as our industry grows, we're going to be a lot more specialized. We have certainly a lot more opportunity to, to bring in the workforce. And uh, with me today, perfect timing, uh, Mr. John Thomas from Water Furnace is walking through the aisle. We have uh, Ed Davis from Intertech Global and Mike Hammond from Climate Master. So, They'll be uh, speaking about these new programs as well. We had to wait for you, John, so perfect timing. <laughs> no, that, don't wait for me. <laughs> All right. So just a little bit of background. I know when John Chivago asked how many were new, there were a lot of hands, which is great. I uh, love to see that. So you might not be familiar with IGSPA. You might not be familiar with the training that we have. Uh, you know, IGSPA started in 1987 as part of Oklahoma State University. In September of 2020, IGSPA became an independent nonprofit, a 501c6 trade association. And so uh, we really credit Oklahoma State for being the pioneers in the industry. They, they created a lot of the training programs, they created uh, materials, manuals, you name it, and, uh, and that was really a great start. The training that they created has been in place for quite some time. In fact, the accredited installer training that you might be familiar with, uh, I took in 1989, maybe, if I remember right. And I'm dating myself here, but uh, it's really a, a, has been a, a great program for us. It's still our most popular. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's geared towards residential light, light commercial. The challenge is that it's, you know, there's a lot of content. And as we grow as an industry, we really need to look at the job functions. I, I'm sure everybody in this room has no problems getting technicians, right? If you're a contractor, that's an e easy job, huh? So, so we have to get people brought into our industry. We have to, to train existing uh, people. And even if you're not doing ground source heat pumps today, you really need to learn about it because uh, your customers are going to be asking for it. So, so we've got to, got to start down that path. That's a little bit of background, and I already get into why change. You know, as we grow, we all need more people in this industry. You know, we're expecting great things, uh, potential capacity problems because we just don't have enough employees. So one of the things we want to do is uh, break up this particular course I mentioned, the accredited installer, into modules, and also look at all the other jobs that are that are in the. Uh, geothermal space. There was a report in 2013 put together by the Geothermal Heat Pump Consortium, which is now GeoExchange, uh, at the request of the Department of Energy, and it outlined 14 different jobs in our industry. Now they've changed a little bit over the years, but for the most part those 14 are still a good benchmark, and that report has job descriptions for each one of those uh, jobs. What it does for us from a training standpoint is it allows us to increase access to training. So for example, if, if you're a, a tie-in crew, part of a tie-in crew doing fusion in the field, you probably don't care about duct work, right? So why would we teach you about duct work? Let's, let's hit the ground running. And there are a lot of other jobs like that. It also lowers the cost of training, it allows us specialization, and we have a lot of flexibility. They, they can be in person, they can be uh, virtual, learn at your own pace. So we're really moving towards this modularization to make sure that we have training for the right jobs. This, in, this accredited installer I mentioned, that a lot of you have gone through. I, I checked uh, over the weekend, you know, somebody had asked me about uh, how many accredited installers there are in a particular state. So I gave them the number for that state and also looked at the total we've had. We have about 6,500 accredited installers, so we've taught this training quite a lot. It's going to be broken up into an installation technician for the inside portion, primarily the uh, ground source heat pump, the outside part of the building, 
We need, uh, you know, driller technicians, grouters, service technicians, fusion technicians, tie-in crew, and a whole bunch of other job titles that are part of these 14. So that training is going to be broken up, and we've already started that. That's one of the reasons why uh, we're doing this presentation today with my colleagues here. Uh, the first three modules are the inside portion of the installation, the installation technician, service technician, and uh, residential designer. We practiced on the uh, Iowa Geo Conference in, uh, in February, so we'll bring it to New York now after we've uh, had our first practice. No, just kidding, it was uh, our first run. And so those two uh, went very, very well, and uh, we expect to start expanding the ability to, to do those uh, training modules here um, over the summer. What you'll get with this installation technician is these 11 topics you can see here. I won't re read them word for word, but these are the key skills that an installation technician we feel like would need. we would need. And the benefit here is that, uh, you know, this isn't an IGSPA creation. We had the privilege of working with four of the heat pump manufacturers, three of them here with me today, to make sure we were on the right track. And the participation was just great. So, uh, so this is not just IGSPA's uh, opinion. This is actually uh, practical knowledge from people that have been in the field for, for decades. Our learning outcomes is, uh, again, a bulleted list here. I won't go into a lot of detail. But once they go through this training, they should be able to install the product. And as we see division of labor, you know, we'll likely have a, a technician who's working on the inside, we'll have technicians working on the outside, uh, uh, some in between, I suppose, depending upon how the piping uh, is, is run. It also addresses not only packaged units, but split systems. Uh, one of the areas we need to work on, especially for here in the Northeast, are hydronic uh, applications as well. But for now, we're concentrating on water to air systems. <coughs> So it, this is a seven port, uh, excuse me, seven part course. And uh, this is sort of the basic service technician. We expect to have an advanced service technician coming out uh, later this year. And what's really neat about the advanced uh, technician course is it goes beyond just some of these basic service uh, challenges and gets into a lot more subtle detail. And again, from people who have been in this industry for quite some time. so. They have tips that are going to help technicians not spend a lot of time on the job. They'll be able to go, you know, right to the source. A lot of, a lot of systems out there. You know, we run across 40-year-old 40, 40 ground source heat pumps all the time, so it helps to have people that with, with some experience. The learning outcomes, much like the install tech, are, are they need to understand what they're doing uh, when they're servicing equipment. And what the beauty of this is, it really concentrates on the, the water side, the, uh, the fluid side. So it, it goes through a lot of detail, trying to avoid hooking up those gauges you see on the screen because uh, we want our, our technicians to really uh, service this equipment uh, with the right process. This is a, a great announcement here. Three of the four manufacturers that we've been working with are here today. Uh, unfortunately, Bosch couldn't, couldn't uh, make our panel, but uh, these four manufacturers, Bosch, Climate Master, Intertech, and Water Furnace, uh, in meetings we had uh, starting a couple of years ago, agreed to teach these two modules that I just talked about, the installation technician and the service technician, and also include their product information. So now, as a technician, you go through one course instead of two. You don't need to go through an IGSPA course and that manufacturer's training. You're going to get both the IGSPA certificate and the manufacturer's information. So you might learn about the manufacturer's controls, warranties, things that, that differentiate them from, uh, from other uh, ground source heat pumps. And uh, we, we've had a lot of engagement with the manufacturers, so we're, we're pleased. I, I, I didn't think in my career I'd see all four of these manufacturers agree on one thing, right guys? So. <laughs> Kind of, kind of a nice, nice feeling. I can't take the credit for it. They're the ones that did the work. So um, they were all in the training committee. Uh, we had uh, two from um, Climate Master, two from Intertech, two from Water Furnace, and one trainer from Bosch. So we had an amazing number of slides. Our biggest challenge was we must have had a thousand slides that we were working with, and we had to narrow them down. So that's why we ended up with a basic service and an advanced service. There was so much information, 
that it was like, uh, you know, uh, overload really at that point. So I, I think you'll really li like what we came up with. And we already have our first two modules scheduled for uh, April. I think we have about 100 people signed up for that training in Mitchell, South Dakota. So we're pretty excited about that. The residential designer is the one that we're working on this summer. This is a two-day course. And again, this was part of that accredited installer. So we're breaking up all these pieces into uh, digestible modules. So we'll start from the beginning of, uh, you know, reviewing building loads and going through the whole design process, sizing the ground source heat pump to the ground loop, you know, multi-systems and, and so forth. So you'll actually have an example uh, job that you'll design during that course. The learning outcomes design start to finish, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, giving a set of plans for a small residential system, you'll be able to come out of this course knowing how to do that. And all of this is based on the binational standard. It's a um, ANSI CSA IGSPA standard, binational meaning Canada and the U.S. And so now we have uh, minimum requirements defined and a resource. So when you go to this training, you'll take that standard with you and, uh, and you'll have something to uh, reference later on. New York is also looking at adopting that standard into code language. So hopefully, uh, like New York is doing with a lot of other things, uh, you'll, you'll set the tone e even for training in standards, which is pretty exciting. Modulation, modularization process here, probably ought to change that name to make it easier to, easier to say. We'll call it uh, something else. Like I said, we have the service tech and the install tech complete, and we're ready to teach that later on this month. Uh, we have the residential light commercial ready this fall. Uh, our commercial designer training is uh, a little bit farther off. We expect it to be done by the end of the year, but uh, we're promising summer 2025 because there are some certification uh, changes that we need to make. The same with the uh, geothermal inspector and all the other modules. Our goal is to have done by the end of 2025. So about you know a year and a half or so, uh, you'll see a, really a, a large selection of IGSPA courses. Primarily today, we have the accredited installer for residential light commercial and certified geo exchange designer for uh, commercial. And uh, this will likely end up being about 12 modules. So we're going to fit the right training to the right person. We're also working with community colleges, labor unions, and other organizations on some driller training. There are a lot of really good driller training programs out there. There's not any point in reinventing the wheel. You know, we're certainly not going to teach drillers how to drill, and, uh, but we need to bring them into our industry. So, so that's where we're, we're going with the driller side of it. But uh, from an application standpoint, you'll see a lot of changes in the training. So what happens to AI? This is required in New York, so, so it's important that we talk about this. It's not going to go away anytime soon. You know, we'll continue to offer this if you like it. If some people want to know, start to finish, design all the way through. So, uh, you know, we need to be aware of the incentive programs and so forth. And uh, eventually what will happen, if you think about these modules I just mentioned, we'll have a matrix. So if you take A plus B plus C plus whatever, that equals, you know, a particular course. Same thing with the accredited installer. You can get there from taking multiple modules, but you don't have to. And, and some people won't want to take all those modules. What's great about that, though, is it, it gives people a way to learn, you know, through the through your employment. Maybe you're you're starting out as an installation technician, and your your goal is to be a service technician. Now you can just continue to take those courses. Maybe you want to be a designer at some point. So everything you take it builds upon something else. If you remember, you know, courses you took in high school, you didn't really learn that information until the next course. A lot of times, it takes building upon all those skills. And of course, we'll continue to recertify anybody. I spoke to a gentleman this morning that, that had let his certification expire, and we have a way to bring people back in. But uh, you'll, you'll continue to uh, be able to recertify your accredited installer, even after all these modules are, are out there. Eventually, it'll be retired, but there'll be a substitute for it. All right. So, what I'd like to do now is get a perspective from the three manufacturers we've been working with 
and uh, also have any kind of questions and answers that you might have on, on the changes here. So we'll start with uh, John Thomas, President and CEO of Water Furnace. Uh, we really appreciate uh, you know, Water Furnace's contribution to this uh, program and commitment to IGSPA. John, do you want to say a few things about uh, Water Furnace's perspective on the training? Yep, yeah, sure. Thanks, Jeff. And thanks for all of you for taking interest in IGSPA and workforce development. Um, and I just want to say congrats to Jeff. He's charting out a journey on what I would say is not just updating, but it's making the training for many of your employees and or your design groups, m making it accessible in a way that's, I would say, relevant to how people work today. We got a lot of challenges from the past that the training wasn't updated and to get an AI exam, successful exam and certification, Technicians were having to learn about things that they weren't demonstrating in the field. And that makes it irrelevant. And so picking these bite-sized modules and breaking it down, I think is gonna be an enabler for a contractor that wants to get started, but doesn't wanna solve it all and be the expert overnight. This gives a way for them to step into the industry and get started in an equitable way. Um, I guess I would just comment and, and thanks to Jeff and the organization for what they accomplished beyond what Jeff presented. I mean, the core focus areas of IGSPA are not only just workforce development and training, but it's also design standards for ground source heat exchangers. And Jeff himself has done a lot of work over the last two years to harmonize standards that exist where there was overlap or duplication. And then lastly, it's technology development. I mean, you heard uh, Donovan and, and Rory comment that, you know, we need cost innovation. And as you scale an industry, that's true. We're all motivated to figure out how to reduce the first costs. And the technology development, Jeff's tapped in with organizations around the globe. That's why it's called the International Ground Source Heat Pump Association. So there's folks from Western Europe that have some advanced methods in drilling technology and loop installation, and then working with the national labs. Um, we've got resident experts at Oak Ridge National Labs and other laboratory facilities that our taxpayer dollars are paying for, and we want to leverage more of those intellectual resources into how do we get the most cost-efficient yet high-performance low temp ground source heat exchange technology deployed in this market. And that'll be continued quest of the future of how we continue to uh, implement that and bring it to the market, which is where the rubber hits the road. So it's beyond just workforce development, and, but we're making progress in all those areas. So thanks to Jeff and the team for doing that. Thank you, John. I appreciate the comments and, and the support. Uh, we also have had a lot of support from Intertech Global, and uh, Ed Davis, Vice President of Sales, is here to talk a little bit about that. Uh, thank you, Ed. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here today. John, well done, as usual. Uh, just going back a few years ago when we were trying to reinvigorate IGSPA, everybody came to the same conclusion. There's only one man that could pull this off, and it was Jeff. So we're just, we're just so pleased, and to have all three of us on this stage is pretty remarkable in itself. I mean, we all have come together as a conclusive group for the common good of the industry, which I think is a first. And uh, I'm proud to be up here with John and Mike and Jeff and all of you just to, to take that dream a little step, just a step further and see what can we do from here. So uh, about two years ago, we all put our key guys into a pool and said, Let's get this thing off the ground. So I know Entertech and I know JT and, and Michael, they all took their key guys and we each paid out of our own coffers to up to 20 hours a week or so to get this program going. And it's been a huge success to this point. Um, so I'm really happy for that. And then I'm also pleased to say that, uh, Jeff, we do have 102 at the, uh, that will be in Mitchell, South Dakota for the inaugural training uh, out there at our facility, uh, again, our trainers will be there. Uh, Greg Kurtz, I understand, will be there as well to uh, proctor the exam. So that'll be fantastic. But uh, again, it's just, uh, it's so much fun. I've uh, been in this industry since about 92, and I'm starting to feel like we're finally starting to maybe get into a, a second gear. 
instead of just plodding along. I think we have a course here now that's charted very well. And uh, I'm just eager to see what Jeff and the team and, and the OEMs can uh, come together and for the common good of this industry, which we know is phenomenal. So thank you, Jeff, and I appreciate you uh, letting us come up here today. Thank you, Ed. 102. Wow, that's great. <laughs> All right. And uh, last but not least, uh, Mike Hammond is uh, with Climate Master. He is also the uh, subcommittee chair for this service and installation module uh, subcommittee. So the two that we that I talked about earlier, uh, Mike has headed up that subcommittee, and we appreciate uh, you know Mike's work on that. We like I said, we had a lot of slides to go through. So Mike, you're up next. All right. Again, thanks, Jeff. And uh, good morning to everybody. And uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, be a part of this uh, training committee and working with all these great folks. And just like Ed and John have said and Jeff, uh, there has been great camaraderie between our all companies, including Bosch that's not here, in working on this. And I've never seen anything like this in all the years I've been in the industry. And it's, it's just, uh, it's really awesome to see, because that's what it's gonna really take to grow this industry, is to uh, work together and uh, on these common uh, goals that we all have. And uh, this training, again, is gonna be the foundation of all our manufacturer training when it comes to like service installation. And then we'll just add in controls. Uh, as we all work together, we met a couple different times at uh, a couple different locations, uh, uh, trainers from uh, these the various uh, companies and uh, we all just you know we went through these thousands of slides that Jeff was talking about but we all were like oh yeah I like your slide better I like this slide I mean it just was a great uh, uh, great working with everybody and uh, I can't uh, uh, tell you how much this training is just uh, it's a great uh, thing that's been put together by all three companies well four companies and a few other folks as well, and obviously the uh, ICSPA staff, uh, Greg Kurtz and Jeff have done a fabulous job uh, polishing it all up from all our uh, meetings that we had. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a great uh, training course uh, that's uh, relevant to today's time. So, anyways, that's all I have to say about that. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah, our, our first meeting was, uh, was hosted by Water Furnace in, in Fort Wayne. And I, I thought I'd better wear my black and white referee shirt uh, when, when we get started here. And uh, as Mike said, it was quite amazing uh, to, to see the uh, camaraderie and, and the work. And we have some time here for questions. I know uh, these are a lot of changes. Uh, if you're new to the industry, you might not even be familiar with, uh, with IGSPA. You might not have gone through our training. So we have a panel of experts here, uh, and I'm certainly happy to ask questions as well. So I'm going to open it up for, for questions for, uh, for me and the panel. And you must introduce yourself, as John said, before I give it to you. We have to After follow John's you. rules. We're on <laughs> tape, I think, aren't we? So. We're on camera. We're on All camera. Right. You can also meet me halfway. <laughs> Uh, my name is Rob Vilches. I'm with the United Association. Uh, we're a labor organization representing uh, plumbers, pipe fitters, and, and HVACR technicians. So you mentioned, uh, from, a, from a manufacturer standpoint, uh, you mentioned that you guys all came together and this new revitalized ICSPA training is going to be a baseline for all of your equipment. Is that correct? And then yes. you guys are just going to add in uh, your manufacturer-specific items? That's correct. All right. Um, so with that, you know, from a, from a, a labor perspective, from a contractor viewpoint, um, and I know time is valuable for everybody in the room, um, taking the, the ICSPA-only version of this training and then needing to go take separate, I, I know you're gonna combine it, each of you are combining this training um, at a manufacturer level to where you only have to take your course, say for Intertech or, or Water Furnace, uh, Climate Master, so on. Um, is there a way we can, can speed that up to where we're not needing to take four separate classes? Well, if you go through any of the three manufacturers' courses, you're gonna get the basics. So uh, really, 
what's left is is uh, a slideshow or two that is specific to those manufacturers' information. So I would think, and I, I don't want to speak for these guys, but uh, it would be a relatively quick training to fill in those missing pieces. I think you could do it virtually even. I don't know how you okay. guys feel about that, nope. but I, I think, you know, you guys want to speak on, on that from each of your brand perspectives? Yeah, I, I would just comment because I, I think your question's spot on. Um, from a residential perspective, most of your residential contractors have a primary brand that they're aligned with. And so first and foremost, they will dive in deeper on the training for the brand that they're representing. But we have to be realistic from the standpoint of if I have an issue with my ground source heat pump and I don't have a brand, but I want this contractor to do it, they're going to send somebody out and service other people's equipment. So, but the technical training for equipment for all of us, we have primary channel partners on the residential side. On the commercial side, it's really more about the mechanical contractor and the commissioning of the equipment. And in the commercial side, I think in most cases, that's going to be a different contractor than is going to be putting in the bore field. Most of your, you know, l most commercial applications are going to be vertical unless they're a lake loop type application. Very few horizontals for larger commercial. And you're going to have specialized loop installation contractors working either for the mechanical or the general contractor putting in the loops. And then you're going to have separate contractors that will be working with our sales representatives on commissioning that equipment. But your point's valid of how do we make it more efficient for installing and commissioning techs, commercial and residential, how do we make it more efficient so they don't have to spend eight days in the classroom just to figure out how to commission and maintain equipment? Those contractors are rep they work on all brands, um, and they don't necessarily align themselves as a dealer. Where residential market does typically have a dealer partnership with a brand. Yep, and then I would okay, so that's a great add on. So I would just add on and then turn over to to, to Ed and and Mike is. I think it's consistent. All OEMs that are playing in the commercial space, we're not relying on a mechanical contractor to commission unless they are comfortable, commission the equipment on commissioning day, including integration and validation of the controls. Because most of the issues reside on the control side. So we have application engineers that are dispatched as part of the project that go out and do commissioning on equipment on every installation if the mechanical contractor is so inclined to want that service. I would agree with that, John, 100%. And we have field guys that can go out and help do startups as well. And typically, it's part of the quote, usually, when we when we do put that package together. So, yep. Yeah, Mike, do you want to speak yeah, on that? Sorry, bro. That's all right. You're Mike. <laughs> they stole my mic. Mike's the most knowledgeable guy. <laughs> they stole my mic. Uh, but yeah, I would reiterate exactly what uh, Ed and uh, John had said here as well from the commercial aspect. Uh, if if the job needs to get uh, commissioned and they don't have uh, sufficient resources, uh, you know, there to do it, then obviously we can help them in that as far as, you know, manufacturer goes. Now, uh, you know, back just a little bit to the uh, the training. Again, the, the training that we built is kind of generic, if you will, and then, then the, the controls, the things that make us unique between manufacturers, which is primarily our controls, that would be the add-on. So, the foundation of the training is going to be the same between all, all of us. And then it's going to be just the differences, some of the unique little differences. Uh, and primarily that would be the controls, you know, between, I mean, moving water through the heat pump, whether it's one or the other, is going to be the same, you know. So it's a matter of uh, how we operate the controls and those little unique th details. So that's, that's the primary add-on to this training that the, the manufacturers are going to be doing as they present this material. You know, one of the interesting things we found as we went through this process and having uh, experts from, from four manufacturers was we had to address some, some issues in the industry, piping materials, things like that, uh, heat transfer fluid and antifreeze. And so it was a great forum to have those discussions. I think we spent 
you know, probably half a day just talking about piping materials and heat transfer fluids. So that alone, having consensus, was a pretty big deal for our industry because we really don't want to have, you know, different opinions out there that are potentially causing, you know, problems with design and installation. So, um, so that, that was actually a really refreshing part of that, those discussions. Um, and not, none of them got heated, so that was even better. You must have other, other questions. I see in the back of the room, if we can bring a mic back there. Hi, um, this, this, you guys mentioned training. Um, I'd like to know what is available, what type of, are there any type of incentives that can help us cover some of the cost of the training? Um, plus, I'd like to know, me personally, I'm having a lot of problems um, with the closed vertical loop drilling exam and I'm not the only one. Um, I talked to a company from Carolina and they, he can't get any of his guys to pass the uh, national groundwater exam. What can we do in New York State? I think it's like a monopoly, you know, it's not fair. And every time I have to take time to study and prepare for the exam, I'm taking time for my not-for-profit when we could be doing other things. So what can help us, because it's really blocking us in our state from getting the incentives? Sure, no, that's a great question. With uh, regard to, to the uh, training itself, the cost for training, there are some really good opportunities in the state of New York, more so than just about any place else that I've seen. And we've been working with New York GEO, Christine Hoffer, on uh, some nice sort of funding, which I think is a great opportunity to get people into training. What we'd like to do is bring people into training, even if they're not quite ready to do, you know, ground source installations. Let's get them familiar with the terminology, with the technology, and uh, and that can be expensive. You know, by the time you get the the cost of the materials and and the training itself, the venue, that kind of thing. So I would recommend working with Christine at, at uh, Nigeo on what she's doing with, with NYSERDA. I think that's a great opportunity to bring in um, some funding. The state of New York is, is very committed to this industry and to training. Um, on the exam that you're talking about, National Groundwater Association, that, that's actually not an IGSPA exam, that's National Groundwater Association. Uh, we are working with National Groundwater Association to um, look at what training materials and programs that, that we have together to help promote the industry. One of the challenges we have with that NGWA exam is that there's no course to go along with the exam. So you can buy the books, um, which are, again, not, not inexpensive, but you really need to, need to have a training that goes along with that so that when you take the test, you're prepared. And uh, we, we had some meetings yesterday about that. Uh, we're, we're talking to uh, labor in the state of New York on, on what opportunities we might have for training there. Uh, looking at community colleges and really, you know, we're, we're kind of an open, we have a lot of uh, opportunities, so we have an open mind on how that might look in the state of New York. What's great about New York is uh, it's, it's the perfect atmosphere to try some of this stuff. And if it works in New York, it's going to spread to the rest of the country in North America. So I, I would recommend on, on uh, both of those concerns that you work with your local organizations, especially in New York Geo, work with NYSERDA, feel free to reach out to IGSPA, um, and, and there's, there's a lot of uh, resources there available. And but what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that I think that you guys could play a role to help because I had a problem with some of the questions with two of the same answers. That, that, that either one of them could have been correct, and, and a number of them. And I asked drillers in um, Nashville, and, and nobody seemed to know the answers. And it just, it just seems like they have a monopoly, and I hope you guys can do something to help. But I've already voiced this concern to Christine about a week ago, and then she said she was going to look into it. Yeah, yeah, but Chris I hope y'all help her, too, so okay. that stuff doesn't get, it's just not right that we're blocked in New York State well, we can't get the incentives. It's not right. Yeah, that, that's a, certainly a valid concern. And, and we are working with NGWA 
you know, on a regular basis as well as with New York Geo. So it's definitely on the radar screen. Thank you for those comments. Please introduce yourself. Uh, Wayne Mackey, Local 17. Um, to answer one question for the funding, Adele Ferrante from NYSERDA is going to be on the next uh, panel at 11 o'clock. Right. Oh, thank you, Wayne. That's, that's good to know. Yeah, there's an amazing amount of support in this state. And, uh, and, and it's for labor, it's for training, it's for, you know, all the different aspects of uh, installing ground source heat pump systems. So, uh, you know, I, I would say, you know, keep uh, in contact with your local organizations and, and uh, unions and state officials because uh, it's out there. We just need to sometimes have a little bit more discussions. I guess there's a question up front. Uh, Sandy Dijon, Binghamton University. Uh, we're part of the SUNY system, and uh, so the first thing that we need to uh, incorporate this requirement in our construction spec is to have some kind of standards, specifications already put together for us to just copy and paste into our construction bit spec. Uh, how far are we in this process um, to, say, have this requirement for the accreditation our certification. Um, part two of my question is, with all the different changes in refriger refrigerants, you know, going from, you know, uh, the conventional kind of refrigerant to the low uh, GHG type refrigerant, how much does that impact your training uh, process? And people get retrained every, every time there's a new refrigerant in the market? Great questions. I, I could talk on both of those for the next hour, but I'll try to keep it uh, short. So uh, on the first one with um, specifications and standards uh, for jobs, uh, I have a, a pretty exciting opportunity to work with Sustainable Westchester for um, standards and codes in Westchester County. We hope that is a model for the rest of the state and the rest of the country. Uh, I mentioned earlier there's a binational standard, U.S. and Canada. It's, it's an ANSI, CSA, and IGSPA standard. It, it's uh, number is C448, and that's the design and installation of ground source heat pump systems. So these are minimum requirements. If um, somebody wants to know, you know, what is the minimum uh, entering water temperature that we can design for in Buffalo versus in uh, New York City or something like that on a residential installation. Or on the commercial, what is the um, requirement for spacing of bores, things like that. Uh, what's great about that standard is it's been binational since 2016, so it's been available in the U.S. We send it out with all of our training courses. It's been in Canada since 1992 and is part of their building code. So we have an opportunity, hopefully in, in Westchester County, working with the local jurisdictions to try to move some of this language into code and promote consistency. It would be quite a shame to have a code in Westchester County that's different from someplace else in the state of New York. Now all of a sudden you might have to grout differently here and then over here. You may have different uh, setbacks, all that kind of thing. And we've learned a lot in updating the most recent uh, standard because of New York City and Toronto primarily. Uh, you know, some of the setbacks even don't really work because what are you gonna do if you have a ground heat exchanger that's on the property line. You gotta think, rethink some of those things. So from a standards uh, standpoint, uh, I would encourage everyone to, to, to look for this binational standard and, and get familiar with it. There is a new edition coming out this, uh, by the end of the year, which will include uh, thermal energy networks, energy piles, sewer waste heat recovery, the latest heat transfer fluids, the latest piping materials, and that should go out for public review. We were hoping for April, but it's probably gonna be May. And so watch for those announcements from IGSPA. If you're not on our IGSPA mailing list, just shoot us an email at info at and we'd be happy to add you to that list so that you hear about the latest um, standards development. Uh, from a standpoint of the refrigerant, uh, that's something that is a, a big advantage to the way we've put this training together. Right now, uh, the, the training is, is not, do, doesn't concentrate a lot on refrigerant and the installation portion, because for the most part, we're seeing a lot of packaged equipment. Now, we have split systems that require 
uh, you know, knowledge of, of refrigerant systems and for service, obviously, that's something that is important. But with this group of manufacturers, we now have the opportunity as A2L refrigerants are introduced into the market to simply update our training materials. So that might require one little module and because that person has committed their time to maybe the service tech module, there could be a refresher course on A2Ls that would then bring them up to speed pretty quickly. So the modular approach is gonna help us with that. There are some differences in service with A2L versus um, you know, the current refrigerants like 410A out there or the older refrigerants like R22. And uh, having this panel of, of experts and their training uh, personnel is gonna give us a big advantage to working with that. Hopefully I was able to address your questions. Fun, fun stuff we could. So it's, Sustainable uh, Westchester will be here at 11 doing the next session. Oh, good timing. I didn't realize I did a segue, but that's, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's okay. Um, I'm Dave Rosett from uh, Rosett Drilling. I'm also the president of Empire State Water Well. Um, just to address um, this lady's question on certification, there's a, there is a discussion 2.30 on that with DEC and me and a couple others. Uh, and you're, you're definitely right on the questions on the national test, which, you know, my guys and my company failed many times before they finally got it. And it is a, a, a chore, you know, $75 each test, which we pay for, the time off from work, all that. And, and when they, they'll give you an idea where your need, where your questions may be wrong in that area, but they don't tell you which one's wrong. So we're working with that. We got people in national. Uh, we're going to be doing, I believe, more training through Empire State um, because we want to make sure that the grouting done is done properly uh, and not just, you know, I'm not picking from people from South Carolina or whatever, but people out of state just don't come on to New York and, and don't do the job properly. So we got to work together with national and everyone else, honestly, to make sure the job's right and, 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 and more easily accomplish like what you're looking for. Love to see the resources in New York. How can we clone New York and take it to the other states? It's, a, it's amazing, really, the amount of work that's going on here. Do we have time for another Last question? Last question, yes. <clears throat> for the panel. I am Joanne Koontz. I work at Hudson Valley Community College, and I just have to t chime in as an educator that the questions are not written by the people in the industry a lot of times. I teach photovoltaics, and the same thing is true with our certification NAPSAB test. You have to actually know how to read a test question, not the content. I also used to correct regions, or write regions questions for New York State, and they would be written out in California and Senate, and they weren't even scientifically correct. The, there's a mismatch between the questions that they're asking and the, and the information that's being taught. Now, I don't know in this particular instance, and Ishba, you know, if there's uh, how they're coordinating this effort, but I've seen this time and time again with these tests, even like SATs, I have to say. So you're not, it's not your imagination is what I'm saying, and I'm really glad that we're addressing it, and I hope it falls on ears that can correct this because it's, it is really, really difficult, and it's keeping people from the industry. So, thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Yeah, and that's why we're working so closely with NGWA because that does need to be brought up. One of the exciting things about some of the new curriculum we're working on, um, for the accredited curriculum portion of it, we're working with CSA Group out of Cleveland. And uh, I had never heard of a, uh, a psychologist in the training side of things, but they actually employ a, a psychologist who helps us with test questions. So. Uh, we, we think we'll uh, start to measure what is being taught rather than trick questions. That's always been a pet peeve of mine is a trick question. I mean, what's the point of a trick question? Just trying to trip somebody up that's not helpful. So uh, excellent comments. I thank every, everybody for their time. Uh, this has been really an informative session for me, certainly. And uh, this is a great conference to attend. I hope you were able to get something out of it and, and see the direction that, that we're heading as an industry. If we can be of any help at all, certainly don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much for our panelists. We appreciate the support of the manufacturers, and we're looking forward to working with um, everyone in New York. Thank you.
all day. That's fun. Thanks, man. Thanks again. Now, oh, the room's I excellent. told John yesterday, I go, I'm a vacuum here. I'm a piece of hand. Just have and feet. There you go. Just, I ran my own job. conference last two weeks ago, and I'm still not recovered. <laughs> I'm like, so just exhausted. Because yeah. unlike Nigeo, I have one person. It's me. And I got 200 people at, at Hudson Valley. To, oh, yeah. So I was That's pumped. Right. But. Exactly. Actually, you guys were there. <laughs> you were there. Uh, Amanda was there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was great. So thanks. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to continue to work with them. Um, I'm the president of AEE, so for Capital Region. So I care about Hudson Valley. Like I don't really care about Ulster County, really. But um, I think I think I'm going to keep up with them because I want to make sure. As a part of like, what I do with John and what I do with my, I, I work part time, but yeah, so I do have a lot of different hats. So I want to make sure. That's great. Exactly. Yeah. Gallbladder yeah. surgery. So I, I think you could probably live without yeah, my, your gallbladder. Like yeah. So yeah, I'm just concerned. He's a nice guy. Just tell him I said I have to see him. Uh, yeah, if I interface with him at some point, I will. Um, yeah. Gallbladder, yeah, that's usually just laparoscopic. You could do that usually one night. I think he just didn't want to come up, so he just did some sore. sort of elective surgery, yeah. right? Is that, how, is that how that works? Is he that good? No, no. Uh, uh, no nice. But the, the one down in Brooklyn, I can't wait to it's going to be so one. fun. I'm going to love it when we lose control, because we know what we're doing here. Okay. You think it's going to be up? We, we know what we're doing here, so it's we'll not as there. fun, right? We'll be there, but you think the sign are going to be off the hook? <clears throat> I don't, so John, Ke I didn't even know what I was doing until... You know, yesterday, okay. but uh, yeah, watch out, don't die. Uh, there's no reason why we can get a thousand down there. Just, why not? What's the over to, it, It'll be a Marriott in Brooklyn. Okay. okay. Cool. So I don't know exactly. We probably have pretty much frequent. Yeah, maybe some batter stands. You know, kind It'd be of hard to get heavy yeah, yeah, through congestion yeah. pricing to Brooklyn over exactly another bridge. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But <clears throat> I think so. It's funny that that woman she had. Similar problems last year, I the year before. Yeah. And I email her. I'm like, hey, I can help you out with certain things in your with your because she works for like a housing yeah. nonprofit. Yeah. She won't email me. She's always coming to play. Oh yeah. I think everybody's like that though. What a good group though. This is I love it. I love the IGO.